Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. Mining Weekly editor Martin Klima joins me today to unpack the latest news in the mining industry. Welcome, Martin. Thanks, Ashley. Can you tell us about the Rietberg copper mine possibly becoming the cash car for Copper 360? Now, this is amazing. You know, you've got all these dormant assets in the Northern Cape, and the copper scenario is really so good. So it's a fantastic advantage for Copper 360. They've got these uh, assets, a dozen of them. They've also got 60 prospects. They're also making plate by getting copper off dumps. So what a wonderful sort of set of things for them because you can see that their profit margin is something like 55%. Uh, now that is higher than anything I've seen in copper. You know, you see people rushing out for copper now you see copper in South America coming out with very, very thin profit margins. The price will go up in the future, but already, you know, this is so profitable. And look how fast it is. You know, you got just over a year later, you've got <coughs> ore coming out of Rittberg, the first one, 11 more to go. So I think that we are in a good position in the Northern Cape when it comes to copper. And I'm glad that Copper 360 like latched onto this because it was wide open for everybody to do it. And Orion Minerals, you know, they saw the opportunity there, listed in Australia, then listed in Johannesburg, but they've taken a longer time. Whereas Copper 360 goes straight onto the alternative uh, s exchange on the JSE, and it's just moving, really moving fast. As they say, you know, they're generating cash now. And with a margin like that, they're going to be able to fund ongoing development. And Anglo Gold Ashanti reported an interim dividend improvement and strong free cash flow. Yes, you know, <laughs> Anglo Gold Ashanti, we feel very close to it because it was created here. They haven't got any operations now, but it's, it's being led by a person who's very concerned about inflation, very concerned <coughs> about costs. Mm. So he's moved strongly to bring down the costs of Anglo Gold Ashanti at a time now when the gold price has just rocketed. So what an advantage for them. They report the interims, the dividends are like over 400% up, you know, the free cash flow over 200% up. They're going into a situation where I think they're probably undervalued. Because this had a South African link to it, it was undervalued. You know, they're now headquartered in Denver, the US. I think things are going to really change for this company. They've got, you know, plans for North America. They're already going in, in South America and they're in Africa, they're in Australia. I think they're going to move very, very well with the gold price of where it is. And lastly, Glencore uh, reported strong strategic achievements as it uh, continues with the decline of its thermal coal operations. Yes, so, you know, Glencore came under pressure from some shareholders because it is so big in coal. You know, that was its main commodity for so many years. And so it had to go back to its shareholders and say, what should we do here? Because we are winding down our energy coal, but we want to go bigger in steel making coal. And they got a very big thumbs up from their shareholders. So they'll run down the energy coal. It's still, it's, it's doing well. They will then build up the steel making coal They've got an acquisition in Canada now. And at the same time, they've got a, a lot of metals and minerals that are part of the new green energy. They're big in copper <coughs> and you know, active in Argentina now in copper. They think copper is going to be um, a very important commodity in Argentina. They think that's the next frontier for copper. So the Mara copper site they've got there, <coughs> they can already start moving on at the moment. There's demand for more copper. Because it's a, it's a brownfield site, there's, there's um, infrastructure there they can move on. And then they've got a, a greenfield project where they've been drilling and they just can't believe the riches of this thing. Every time they drill they find more. And in fact they don't even need more copper now so they've stopped the drilling. But they're really aware that there is huge potential there for copper. Thanks for speaking with us Martin. Thank you Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on the local and global mining industries. To subscribe to Crema Media's Engineering News and Mining Weekly, please email subscriptions at cremamedia.ca.za.